This video runs through a second example of the precise definition of a limit. Now, the first example uh, was using a linear function, something in the form y equals mx plus b. Uh, this will use a rational function, so that'll be one thing that's a little weird. And um, this will actually then end up using the uh, x not equal to a part of the definition. And another odd thing will occur um, relating epsilon and delta in this. So. Um, so here you have this rational function f, and you have to prove that the limit of that function as x approaches negative 5 is equal to negative 4 using the epsilon delta definition of a limit. Um, just first of all, breaking things down a little bit and just at least convincing ourselves that this is true outside of the epsilon delta definition, what you can do is factor the numerator. Um, and in light of wanting to cancel these two things, which you could do as long as x is not equal to negative 5, uh, what you're left with in the numerator is x plus 1, so this is a new function g of x. Um, and as long as x is not equal to negative 5, the number that would cause this uh, denominator to become 0 over here, then f of x and g of x would give you the same values. And whenever that's true, uh, then the limits of these two functions at x is negative 5 would be the same. Um, just as a quick warning, um, it would be very convenient to try to write something like this. That's you'd start with limit. There's a function. I mean, this could be sort of your original problem, and it'd be very um, tempting to write that this is equal to uh, write something like this, and then from here write something like this, and then here evaluate the limit since this is a polynomial and get negative four. And somehow, in mean, what's written here, every single equality has some kind of problem. Um, so let's talk about that. So the reason writing something like this is incorrect is because the limit of a function is a number. And I, what you really need when you write an equal sign is that everything really on the left and the right side of the equality should be equal things. So here you have the limit of a function is, well, this is not a number. This is a function. So that's why this doesn't work. Uh, what you really want for this equality to happen is that this limit would have to be written here. And then the point would be you have limit of a function equals limit of a function, since those two things are both numbers. Now, this equality is not true because here, uh, plugging in x is negative 5 doesn't make sense. Well, here, plugging in x is equal to negative 5 does make sense. And then finally, this is not equal to this uh, because this is a function and this is a number. It's really that the limit of this function is equal to this number. Uh, now, what we're going to need to do in both the discovery phase and the proof phase is actually uh, make use of this function g here. So uh, keep this function in mind, maybe write this down along with uh, f, and also this fact, right, that, that if x is not equal to negative 5, then f is equal to g. We're going to use that on both the discovery phase and the proof phase. So here's the discovery phase. Um, so eventually, um, we are going to use um, this part of the fact, right, in the proof phase, that namely that this thing here says that x and a are different numbers, right? So uh, x will never need to be equal to the number negative 5. And we're going to end up using that. So start as we usually do with this kind of thing, plug in what we know, the, f the formula for f, and the formula for l is what we'd like to plug in, but we don't need to plug in the formula for f. We can replace f with g because we're never considering x being negative 5. Right, that's what this will give us. Okay, so now plug in uh, the function g that we had on the previous slide along with l. Um, and then you can clean this up. This minus minus is a positive. So you really have x plus 5 is uh, absolute value that's less than epsilon. And in the past, you had to do kind of a lot more work. And that was because uh, there was a coefficient in front of x. But at this point, um, there's not a lot you have to do. You can just clean this a little bit by writing this as x minus negative 5. And the whole point in doing that is now you have this match up, right? This x, that minus sign here is this minus sign. That was the whole point of breaking this plus into minus minus. And therefore, a would have to be negative 5. Uh, that I guess we knew already. And then what? Um, here's a curiosity. Here there's epsilon and here there's delta. And in the in other problems, you'll see things like epsilon over 2 over here. And so then you'd say delta is epsilon over 2, or you'd see epsilon over 7. So then delta would be epsilon over 7. Here, uh, I guess coincidentally, delta is just going to be epsilon. And that's it. So you can just use delta's epsilon. So that can happen, and that does happen in this problem. So that was the other weird thing. All right. So we've, in the discovery phase, seen what delta we should use 
for a certain number epsilon, the number corresponding to, to delta for a particular epsilon is epsilon itself. Okay, so if somebody gives us an epsilon, we'll use delta equal to epsilon. And now start with this supposition. And this gives us two things, right? First, that this second inequality is true, but it also gives us this other inequality right here, the one that's typically ignored. And this just says that x is not equal to a, and a, remember, is negative 5. So x is never equal to negative 5. Okay, we have as a fact x is not equal to negative 5. Okay, let's just take this inequality for a while. We'll use the x is not equal to negative 5 here in a moment. But take this, plug in what you know. Um, plug in that a is equal to negative 5, so minus negative 5 gives plus 5 here. And now uh, what I'd like to do is rewrite this so that it looks like g of x minus something. So why g of x? Well, so here's this formula g of x, uh, x plus 1. Maybe it'll help to actually put this in parentheses. Um, this 5 turns into 1 plus 4, but then uh, to get this minus sign here, uh, you'll see why we want that minus sign in a second. This plus 4 turns into minus negative 4. Now here in parentheses is the formula for g of x. That is definitely the g of x formula. Minus negative 4. Um, and now the point is this. Uh, x, we said, um, is not equal to negative 5. And since x is not equal to negative 5, what we did on the first slide was show that then f is equal to g, or g is equal to f, whichever way. But the point is now that x is not equal to negative 5, we can replace g of x with f of x, since these two things are, after all, equal. So we do that. Replace g with the f, and then you can replace this negative 4 with capital L. And now you have absolute value f of x minus l is less than epsilon. That's the thing that we wanted to show, so we're done.